Repulsion is a 1965 drama horror thriller that's written and directed by Roman Polanski. So Repulsion is a film that I've been needing to see for a very long time. I've heard about it for at least two or three years at this point. And it's one of those films that like I just haven't gotten around to. Mostly just because I have a lot of films that I need to watch. And that combined with the fact that sometimes I'm just a lazy fuck. That being said, just going to cut right to the chase about this film. I think that this is a solid film that has some really unsettling moments and a lot of that is how it went about its use of sound and how it went about its use of camera work. The first thing that kind of caught my eye about this film is that the camera work kind of has a mind of its own. Like it kind of has that Emmanuel Lubezki feel where it will kind of just like move away from the main character or the main object of the frame and just kind of go do its own thing. But it does it in this really like slow pan type way. Like the entire film is just full of just like really slow pans. And overall, like I really enjoy that approach with the, with the film because um, it has this really like slow building, slow burn effect that really uh, builds up anticipation, really builds up tension. And um, overall, I think it's a really effective way to use the camera because it's really difficult to pull off that style of camera work to where it seems like it has a mind of its own. Because if not done right, it can come off really unnatural and it just kind of makes you realize, oh yeah, there is somebody behind the camera just moving it around. So it's a really hard thing to pull off and I think this film pulled it off really well. And one thing I will have to say about this film though, like if you haven't seen it and you're going into it, just know that, as I mentioned, it is a slow burn, and this film takes a while to actually get to anything that's striking. Because besides maybe, like, the opening credits, um, this film doesn't give you anything that's really striking until, like, the, like, the third act, honestly. Um, only, like, in the third act do you, like, does a film actually start becoming a horror, and actually start, uh, feeling really unsettling. And, um... For the most part, I really enjoyed that, but there is a part of me that, like, near the second act, going into the third act, I was kind of like, okay, let's kind of get this thing going because um, it just wasn't building up to anything that I thought was really that engaging. And I think it's really important uh, for a filmmaker to try to have something that's really striking in the opening or, like, somewhere in the first act to try to, like, maintain the audience's engagement. But in this film, I felt like it didn't really do that much to at least try to attempt to get the audience's engagement, and it really demands a lot of your patience. But I will say, though, like, if you're really into filmmaking and you really, like, can get wrapped up in the way that the film is presenting itself with the score, with the camera work, um, I think that you'll be fine, because I was fine for the most part, because I really liked the way that the score was used. There's a lot of different uses of score. There's a lot of, like... Uh, like soft jazz there's a lot of jazz flute and then uh and then there's more of just like really weird like obnoxious sounding uh sound effects and score effects that um really give this unsettling vibe to it especially in the third act but um overall like i think if you're used to this kind of uh aesthetic approach i think that it will engage you even through the parts that i think a lot of people might find a bit boring but for me personally when it got to the end of the second act i was like okay I think you're asking a little bit too much of me to really care about what's happening and let's get to something that is a bit more striking and a bit more engaging. But I do think the concept of this film is really interesting and can be really off-putting because essentially the main character is this kind of really depressed, uh, sexless, and even more sexless, he's more like sex repulsed. And it just kind of puts you like in the mind in this kind of psychological state of somebody who is repulsed by sex living in a society that essentially revolves all around sex. And I think that can be nightmarish for a lot of people. And, you know, for some people, that is a reality. Like, there are some people out there who, you know, are asexual and perhaps, you know, aren't into it at all. And for, like, everybody around them and societies all over the world, just, you know, that be everything all the time, I can see how that can be uh, really distressful and really depressing. And this film kind of puts you in the mind of a person that would be like that. And I also thought this film did a great job at conveying its theme about how this is like a man's world. And how uh, women can kind of feel helpless in a lot of different situations. Because 
uh, just the nature of men can be really entitled to a woman's body and to their attention and how sometimes like they just don't know how to take the answer no. I just understand that that is a really frightening aspect of reality that women have to deal with. And I think that this film uh, portrayed that in a really effective way that made me feel really unsettled. That being said, when this film gets to its third act, um, I think most of it was really effective. And there are some things like what I kind of mentioned earlier are presented in a really chilling way. Um, just prepare yourself. I don't want to give like a spoiler away, but just know that there is uh, a few sequences of sexual violence. And I found those scenes, especially the first one that's presented in this film, to be really chilling and disturbing. And it's not just because it's sexual violence. I understand that the concept of that is going to be disturbing by nature, but the way that it's presented through the use of audio or really lack thereof, um, really puts you in this traumatic psychological state and it was just a really creative way to present that scene. And it really made it disturbing and really unsettling. And I think it was a really creative and unsettling way to go about presenting something like that. And it happens a few times in the third act as well. But the first time, like, really got me. And um, it really put me in a really uncomfortable state when I was watching it. But if it, was, if it managed to do that, then that means it did its job really well at provoking a reaction out of me. And I think the way he just uses sound, the way he, he builds it up with the camera work, uh, the, the, the lighting choices as well, um, it's, it's, it was a really effective scene in terms of trying to provoke an emotion out of you. But one other thing about this film that I actually appreciated was that it's a, it's a pretty subtle piece of filmmaking. Uh, you know, besides the fact that it like moves slow and everything, in terms of how it goes about revealing its themes and in terms of it uh, caring to have much closure, it's really subtle with all of that, and I actually admired that about this film, because if I'm comparing it to Rosemary's Baby, which um, I know saying this is like, you know, is going to turn a lot of people off, and it's probably going to make you hit the dislike button, but, you know, I wasn't huge on Rosemary's Baby, and I know a lot of people think it's a masterpiece. I could see why you'd say that, because it's highly influential, and it was really bold for its time, and it was really inventive for its time, so I, I'm definitely going to give it credit there. But um, Repulsion is a much more subtle film compared to Rosemary's Baby. And um, there are sequences in this film, in, in Repulsion, that got more of a reaction out of me than Rosemary's Baby. But that being said, um, I think there are some things about Repulsion, especially in his third act, that do come off a little bit dated and aren't the most convincing. Um, I think for the most part, the third act works really well. But there are some moments of violence that, um, like, I think the technique he was going for was really interesting. But uh, some of it doesn't come off, like, the most realistic or the most engaging. And it's just because it just wasn't the most convincing the way it was shot and the way it was done. And um, that was a little off-putting when I, when I was watching the third act. But overall, I think this film, um, I admire its ability to go about it in a subtle way. Some of the imagery in this film is really admirable as well. And what it's trying to say about the psychological state of the character. And um, overall, like again, I think this is a solid film. So overall, I'm going to give Repulsion not quite an 8 but a high 7, so I'll give it a 7.8 out of 10. I think I actually enjoyed this one just a bit better than Rosemary's Baby, and I know I'm going to get my ass kicked like crazy for that, but um, there were just some things about it that I just couldn't get on board with, and if you want to actually hear like more nuanced thoughts on that, I have a whole video review on that film. If you want to check that out and try to hear me out, you know, be my guest. Either way, if you really enjoy what I had to say about Repulsion, please give this video a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content.